Hey guys, it's Lawzo. Today we're going to rank every single Dark Magician card ever made on this tier list right here. Plus a bunch of cards I think are honorary Dark Magician cards. I think you know exactly which ones I'm talking about. Let's get into it. You can see at the top of my tier list I've got the wonderful Amulet Dragon. Now this is a fan favorite. It's the original Tamias within the card game. It's going to go in the D tier for now. It's really bad. It has one good interaction. When you summon this card, you actually get to banish spells in both graves. And for everyone you banish, it gains 100 attack and it starts at 29. So it actually is really good in the Sky Striker matchup for banishing all their spells. That's it. But honestly, you only really summon this off Eye of Tamias and a DM. There's other ways to summon it, like secrets, but yeah, no one really plays this when you can just make Dragonite or Dragoon, right? So it's going in the D tier for now. We might move it later. Next up is, ho oh, ho, it's a big boy, Anaconda. Now, this has to go straight up to the S tier because this is one of the reasons DM was playable and Dragoon was so easy to summon in the DM combo. So, Anaconda is going right to the top. One of our honorary DM cards. I know it's not a DM card. Though it allowed us to do the Rod Souls combo so efficiently and get Circle and Eternal Souls set up as well because the Rod Search could grab you Soul Server. It was beautiful. Next, we have Relinquish Anima, another honorary DM card. Why this is here is because it makes Magician Souls going second into another kind of bait or interruption. Normally, Magician Souls, when you summon it, you can send spells and traps to draw, and that's really nice. However, Anima means you can turn that Magician Souls into something else that might get impermed or Veiled if they don't want to get rid of your draws. So you can threaten the board with Anima. I'm going to give it a uh, probably a solid B tier for now, but that may change later. We're very much at the start. Apprentice Illusion Magician. This piece of DM support used to be around A or B, I want to say, back in the day. And maybe even in this format, with, with Bicycles and Ashizu cards in the current format, you could almost say this card should resurface to A or B. But I'm still going to put it down in... It's probably not as bad as Amulet Dragon, but it's probably around C. It's playable. I normally play one. It does help us make some of our rank 6 and 7 plays. So you know what? I'm going to leave it there. And adding DM to hand in this format is actually good. So I'm going to put it in C for now. I'm going to go to our Link 1 Artemis here. And I'm actually going to put her in A. For those of you who don't know, I have multiple videos on Artemis. Simply, all she does is link away Rod and is able to recycle Rod. Just make sure you get that Rod in the grave. And she's the spellcaster you tribute to add that Rod back to hand. So very good recycler for the Dark Magician uh, normal summon. Next up, we have a super old card that... It doesn't list Dark Magician. It's not officially Dark Magician support, but I mean, okay, this art has BM on it, but the actual art over here has DM on it because Black Magician and Dark Magician. But anyway, it literally has DM on it or BM on it. And it says, until the end of the turn, all Dark Spellcaster types with 2k or more attack you currently control can't be destroyed by battle. Their effects are negated. Also, they are unaffected by your opponent's card effects. Super weird defensive card. Clearly made for DM, and Yugi used it in an episode, I think. Uh, I can't remember. We're making a new tier for this card because it's absolute dog water. We're going to put it into the F tier. I like that we've got a nice ranking kind of already going. Let's see how it goes from here. Now, the Bonds Package. Now, this should be partnered up with the other cards that go with it. Oh, that's not true. But uh, it's, it's hard to say because normally when you activate Bonds, you are going to be going for one of these three cards with it. You activate Bonds when you have a Dark Magician on the field, and it allows you to summon DMG from your deck or hand or graveyard, so anywhere, really nice, and then set one of these on the field. Now, if you're playing second, you probably want to set one of these because you flip it up straight away. If you are playing first, you normally want Dark Burning Magic, so on your opponent's turn when they start playing, you can flip it and wipe the field. So I think the optimal combo is Bonds with this, the Dark Burning Magic. However, Dark Magic Attack and Dark Burning Attack... I would probably rank them. I'm going to bring them all here. Uh, Doc, I think this is th this bad because you need DMG on the field and then you can play this and it just wipes monsters. Like, Regeki is much easier to play. And it's at 2 or 3 now as well. While Dust is at 1 and this is searchable for Eternal Soul as part of, like, your normal stuff as well as Rod Search and all the other DM stuff. So it's just easier to search because DMG support's just not as good as DM support and that's saying a lot, right? So... This one has to go at the bottom in the F tier. This card is actually pretty... I want to say it's better than Amulet Dragon, so I'm going to put it in C tier. Um, Dark Burning Magic, I actually... Sorry, Dark Magic Attack... What is this card? I forget. Sorry, I got confused on my names again. Dark Burning Magic is the better of the cards, and Bonds helps set that up. So I kind of want to group Bonds with it in the B tier. I think they're solid... 
but they're still kind of bricky and you don't really want to play them. So maybe that does drop them to the C tier. Let's leave them in C for now. We'll see how we go. The Bystool engine, I'm going to put this. Bystool's Bystool's, I don't know how to say it properly. It's going up in A tier because it's just a super good engine to be playing right now in the Tirashizu meta. This could change if, say, Tirashizu is not the meta or a Dark Light deck is not the meta deck. This might come down. I'd say it only ever comes down to B, maybe C, but it's just a good engine anyway. Um, and you can always banish your own monsters. Uh, I'm going to put in A, though. It's super, super good. I wouldn't say it's S, but it's super good. DD Crow, Hand Traps, crazy good. Next, we've got Chaos Form, which, honestly, in Blue Eyes, it makes sense as, like, an Unga Bunga OTK deck. In DM, it's really bad. So I'm going to put it in F tier. Feel free to change my mind. This card's garbage. Dog water. Chicken Game. I want to put this in A, maybe B. It's probably B tier. Chicken Game is so good. Actually, it's kind of better upstart, and I would put upstart in A for DM. So I'm going to put Chicken Game up in A. We'll get to upstart soon. Actually, let's go fish out upstart. All right, I'm going to put Upstart and Chicken Game together because they're kind of the same, except Chicken Game's low-key better. So we've got Upstart, which is just draw one, and you might think, well, what's the use of that? Well, you can combo that with Circle and actually pick what you draw, manipulate what you draw. And even better yet, if you combine that with, where's our good friend, Soul Servant, Soul Servant lets you get exactly what you want. You can go play Upstart, any response, your opponent normally doesn't hand trap it, chain the Soul Servant, you're able to stack literally any Dark Magician card any of them now the best one is soul magician souls because when you draw it you'll activate it put dm or dmg in the grave or mana whoever whatever you're playing and then you can manage the soul servant and draw so you're actually not going negative from chaining the soul servant if you get what i mean your card advantage is neutral and we love to see it so yeah upstart soul servant gets you anywhere in the deck when anaconda was legal uh rod plus upstart got you into anaconda because you'd normal summon rod uh chain soul servant Sorry, you'd normal summon Rod, you would uh, grab Soul Servant, and then you'd activate Upstart, ask for a response, chain Soul Servant, stack Magician Souls, Magician Souls comes down sending DMG on Mana, and then you'd link into Anaconda. Boom, you got your Dragoon, you got your Double Bricks in the grave. You have banished your Soul Servant already, but your next one is going to pop off. Super good, super good Upstart making Rod like a two-card combo, you know, really nice. Um, Soul Servant I've dug out of the deck too, so you know what, I'm going to go ahead and put that in A tier as well. Uh, because it's probably the best DM card, it adds any... DM card, well, stacks it on top of the deck, and then you banish and draw. This card has a potential draw four if you have the two Palladium monsters we have so far, and DM and DMG in the bin. It's a draw four. That will never happen. For now, you're just going to play DM as one of your bricks, and then one of the others, all right? You don't want to play too many others. I see people play DM and DMG, and I see people play DMG and Mana and Mahad, and then like three DM, and I'm just like, just, just pick one. One of the bricks and play it. DMG's got more support, as you can see, through, like, the Bonds package and whatnot. But Mana and Mahad kind of serve their own niche. Like, Mana, if you get Impermed on a Spellcaster, she can summon herself from Grave or Hand. Kind of nice extender. Mahad can come out and beat over a Dark Monster and double his attack. And he floats into DM. So, like, they all have their own niche. But they're all really bad. Anyway, we got a bit off track there, but let's look at the Chronicle Monsters. Chronicle Magician, which is the better one, which I'll put in B tier because, uh, you know what? It's a one of. I'm gonna. I'm trying to put one ofs here, right? Like these cards, we'd play them at more than one. This card B is fine. C, you can play them at one. I, I'm happy to play one Dark Magic Track, one Apprentice, one Chronicle. So Chronicle probably fits in here with the Bond package where you play these at one too. I'd say he's pretty good as a standalone card. He does need to summon himself with like a 2500 attack or defense monster though. He's meant to be the fusion of like a Blue Eyes DM support archetype. It's just a mess right now because we also got Chronicle Sorceress, which is going straight to F tier at the bottom. This card just is a perfect foolish burial card if it was a link. Uh, it says when it's summoned, you can send a dark card. If you have a dark card in the grave, you can send a dark magician card to the grave from deck. If you have a light card in grave, send a blue eyes card from deck to grave. Like, this would have been amazing on a link one. But Konami, once again, just dropped the ball completely. Fumbled the bag. So Chronicle Magician was average and mid to be at best, as you can tell by C tier. And yet, here is... The Sorceress down in uh, F tier. Now, this could have easily been a beautiful link or just it summoned itself, but it doesn't. It doesn't have a way to summon itself, so it's terrible. I just realized we should have an E tier. Um, I I'm happy with these to be in F tier for now, though, so we'll just keep going. Circle. Circle, circle, circle. I want to put circle in C tier. 
people are going to be mad. Circle's really bad, though. So the thing with Circle when it first came out was you had to play three because there was just no other DM support and you really need a DM in hand for Navi and blah, 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 blah. Circle over time has aged horribly and people like often compare it to Pot of Duality and it's just not that. It's just really bad. Circle flips top three in attempts to add a DM or a DM spell trap. That's it. No DM monsters, no DMG, no DMG related cards. Like, what? What? Why does it only support the Magician and not his Apprentice? Why does it only support the Spells and Traps in DM and not the Monsters that support DM? It, it doesn't really add up, and it's just an old card. I really want a new version of it, and that's why I've been stressing in a lot of my videos that, hey, don't play 3 Circle, it's fine at 2, and honestly, some of the time we play it at 1, and it's fine once again, because when you need it, guess what? You've got so many ways to search it, you can go and grab it. It's not that necessary to have it turn 1, you can always grab it when you need it, and Rod and Soul Servant help you do that. Soul Servant also helps you recycle it, so it's not that bad to play one as well. People are like, oh, but they get Cosmic Cyclone. Sure, play two. It's it's not going to happen that often. If you're getting Cosmic Cyclone, you're losing anyway, right? Like, they're going to hit Eternal Soul, so... It's silly responses, in my opinion. If your opponent's got back row removal, like, the game is done for DM a lot of the time, right? Unless you've got Dragon, Lock, uh, Dragon Knight Lock, or you've got Dragoon up with Village... That back row removal is killing you, bro. Like, have you not read Eternal Soul? <laughs> Speaking of which, we should go and grab Eternal Soul. I'm in the same boat as Circle, kind of. I, actually, I think it's better. That's a lie. Eternal Soul is better than Circle. But my god, is it not by much. Eternal Soul is stupid. <laughs> it really should do more. And by do more, I mean it shouldn't wipe your board. That's it. It really just shouldn't. But anyway... Magician's Combination. Here's another card that fits beautifully into the D tier. It's like they had the right idea with this card. The more you read this card, the more you're like, oh, I see where they're coming from. It just doesn't add up. They like knew people were going to wipe your back row because you're playing DM and you got Circle and Eternal Soul. So they're like, oh, we'll give it this effect where when it's destroyed, target a card and destroy it. It's like, great, thank you. However, people normally open their play with the back row removal. People will normally go Lightning Storm or Feather Duster, right? Or Cosmic Cyclone, Twin Twister. They will normally do that before doing anything else. So, elaborate to me, Konami, what the fuck this does? <laughs> what does this do when my opponent activates Duster? Oh, I can target a card on the field and pop it. Great. Wh what am I destroying? The writing in this card is convoluted and ridiculous as well. Don't even get me started. So, you've got to, to negate a card, you flip this card up, and then you have to switch around a DM and a DMG. It doesn't matter which one, they just have to switch from one on field, one on hand or grave, and they have to switch places or tribute one, some of the other. It doesn't matter. The card's bad. <laughs> it's worded dumb. It is dumb. It should be from deck. If it was going to be, oh, have a DM on field, now you can negate something and like switch it with a DMG from deck. Sure. If it was going to be, oh, you have DMG, do the same thing, but for DM, like summon it from anywhere. It should just be anywhere. It shouldn't be just the grave of the hand. Just, just make it anywhere, make it generic, or like, how are we going to play this? No other deck's going to abuse this. Just let us use it. But no, we can't even use combination. Our in archetype negate is dog shit. Ah, a card that's been power crept. Dark Magical Curtain is a old-fashioned version of Magician Souls. We've spoken about Magician Souls a bunch of times now, so I'm going to go ahead and grab Magician Souls, and we're just going to put it right up the top here. I'm not sure if it's worthy of a top spot. I think it's worthy of an A tier spot, actually. Let's put it in the A tier. Magician Souls is just Dark Magical Curtain remade in monster form. It lets you summon out DM or DMG and also send them to the grave, but it could also send the Palladium monsters too. So it's kind of way better, Dark Magic Curtain. Plus, it doesn't cost half your life points. You love to see it. We've come to Dark Paladin. And you know what? I'm happy to put it in E tier. Like, it could probably go with Amulet Dragon, but it's just a little bit harder to summon, so I'm going to put it in E tier. Uh, its effect's pretty good. It's kind of like an old-fashioned Dragoon, and why I say that is it looks like Dragoon, first of all, with the weapon and the armor, very similar kind of vibe. Um, you discard a card and negate a spell when your opponent activates it, and you can do this for the, forever. Like, as many cards as you can discard, you can negate spells. Actually a very good effect. However, it has no protection like Dragoon. It has no, like, you can't target this like Dragoon. Um, it's also required to be fused with the Buster Blader and one Dark Magician. So you got to play Buster Blader unless we get some card in DM that lets us substitute the fusion. Pfft, it's just not good. Obviously, I have Tamias, once again, unsearchable, shit card. Where Oh, we should definitely rank that. It's coming up. It's coming up. I have Tamias, enjoy his get keen. So yeah, look, I like Dark Paladin because against Dragon decks, you gain like a bunch of attack too. That's very fun, very anime, but it's just not quite... 
ever going to be good. Like to summon Dragoon, it's 99% of the time better. You go pop, pop, swing. That's more damage than Dark Paladin will do. And you got to Omni Negate and you're untargetable. Like, and the artworks are so similar. I always tell people who love Dark Paladin, I'm like, have you looked at Dragoon? Like, they nearly look the same. Anyway, that's an argument for another day. Dark Eradicator Warlock, terrible card. It's, I don't know if it's meant to be like a Dark Sage remake. It kind of gives me that vibe, but it's also just bad. Tribute a Dark Magician to Summoner, and then every time, a, is it every time a spell is activated, inflict a thousand? I will say that I love the fact that it's a Warlock, like, and its name is amazing. But the fact that, like, it has to be special by tributing a DM, and can't be summoned other ways. And then, it, yeah, each time a spell is activated, inflict a thousand to your opponent immediately after it resolves. It's like, what, we playing Burn DM now? Like, what are we going to do? Go into this for two cards. Magician Souls, and then Dark Eradicator Warlock, Circle, uh, Flip Top 3, Burn for a Thousand, not add anything because the deck's bad. Like, what, what, what did you want us to do, Konami? You know what? I could play this in time, couldn't I? I actually might. I've got another card for time while we're speaking of time. And it's this. I'm going to put in F tier. Even though I play it, it's, I'm still going to put in F tier. Tome increases the attack of Dark Magician by, or Dark Magician Girl, I think, by 700. But the main thing is, when it's sent to the grave, you gain a thousand. Uh, so you put it on the field, face down, and you send it with Magician Souls for draws, and then you gain a thousand. Of course, you can always attach it to a Dark Magician. You summon off your Magician Souls effect, attach it to DM, and then link away DM. And speaking of linking away DM, here's our boy Link Spider, which is going to go up in the B tier, because he helps uh, recycle DM and link, like, just loop DM. This is also I'm Doc. Back to who we were talking about, uh, this guy. He sucks. Dark Eradicator Warlock, terrible. Uh, this card for winning in time. Yeah, bo both of them inflict a thousand, gain a thousand, similar effects. I might even side both of them at some point. It actually seems really fun. I've already won a game at Lucas with this. It finally happened. Woo! Um, I'm keen to try it with this now. Dark Flare Knight. Honestly, one of my favorite Dark Magician fusions ever, but I will comfortably put it in the F tier. When it is destroyed, uh, you get to summon Mirage Knight. Uh, I guess we should go and find Mirage Knight because they go hand in hand. Uh, I guess I didn't have room for Mirage Knight, but you can imagine Mirage Knight is like a part of this slot here. It's just really bad. It's a main deck brick. And Mirage Knight should be an extra deck card, just like this was, because they're both really bad and really bricky. So it's wild to me that they wanted you to main deck Mirage Knight. Uh, the card's really bad, and it lets you out just a random monster by attacking into it, but then after you attack once, it banishes it. So it, it makes no sense. The cards are bad. They're old, they're anime cards, so it makes sense. Very amazing artwork, but unfortunately, no gameplay. We've got another terrible card coming up. This goes with Illusion card. I forget what this was even called. I'm pretty sure these two cards came out at the same time. And you can see it's got the Dark Magic Circle behind it. Like, it's very much clearly meant to be used for Dark Magician and Yugi themed decks. But the card just sucks, like, to be honest. So Dark Renewal reads that when your opponent normals or specials, you can target one of the monsters and a spell caster you have. You have to target them, so it's already bad. Um... And send both to the grave, and then you can special a dark spellcaster from deck or grave. It's like, hang on, what? <laughs> so, like, you're meant to have DM out, or your rod out, or whatever, and your opponent normals, and you just go dark renewal, send both to grave, uh, and then you summon out DM, circle banish something, or just something similar to that, right? But the problem is, you target stuff, so they can just, like, chain stuff, get rid of the monster you targeted, the one that they played that you targeted, like, chain mask change, right? Just destroys this card completely, so... I don't know, this is a very bad card, it's aged horribly, and going second, like, what do you do with these traps going second? You cry, they're terrible. Ah, uh, Destin Rivals. I'll put it in D because it's, like, on the same level as Combination. It's Dark Magician and Blue Eyes Skill Drain. The problem is, it's not continuous. <laughs> it's only for the turn, you flip it, and it's only the monsters currently on the field. It says, negate the effects of all monsters on the field. I'm pretty sure, let me check. Yep, so I'm just rereading the card. Negate the effects of all face-up monsters your opponent currently controls till the end of the turn. It's... It just misses the mark by a bit. And the fact that it's once per turn, or you can only activate one per turn, like, why does it need that? At least if you open multiple, you should be able to flip it. Oh, your opponent's extended further? I'll oh, flip another one. What would be the big problem with that, Konami? It wouldn't have been overpowered at all. And yeah, of course, you need to control DM or Blue Eyes to basically use an in-arc type imperm, like... Just play Imperm and Veiler. The fact that it's just all face-up monsters they currently control, it's like... There's not a lot you can do with that, right? Unless... Is your opponent going to wait to summon four monsters and then use all their effects at once? Like... Uh, this was just... They, like, knew DM and Blue Eyes like Skill Drain, so they tried to make, like, a kind of version of that, but they just missed the mark. Dark 
The Dark Charmer. I want to put this card almost in eight. Yeah, if Artemis is in A, Dark should probably be in A. This card lets DM do some nutty stuff. I don't know if the ordering should matter too much. It probably should. I'm just going to put the DM cards at the front. Um, Dark lets DM link climb. That's stupid. DM link climbing is really nice. It lets you link climb into, and I'm going to grab Celine here because they're kind of linked together. So Link, uh, so Dark and Celine are like combo, right? Dark and Celine go hand in hand because Dark lets you grab something from their bin, summon it. DPE is a great target, but obviously there's a lot of just Dark things running around all the buy steals and whatnot, uh, some of the tier elements and whatnot. You grab something from their grave, you link it into Celine. Celine lets you then go into access code, or it can bring back DM or a Dragoon or something, trigger your Eternal Soul, or just get Dragoon back out for an Omni Negate. Celine is like another version of Eternal Soul in this deck, so she's really, really good. Would I have a higher than Eternal Soul? Uh, I don't know. I'm just going to put it with Dark, because they're kind of like, they go together, right? Access code would be here too, but... I figure that's a really generic card, and it's very cybers. and yes, we normally go Dark, Selene, Access Code, but I didn't want to waste a slot on it once again, because I only had limited slots. But you can figure that Access Code would go with these two. So playing second, Dark uh, lets you bait negates too. You can normally rod and activate your souls, and they might get negated and whatnot. As long as they're not destroyed, you go into Dark. Your opponent has to respond to this, or you're about to, like, Link Climb up, right? It's really good. And that's what I like about Anima too. Anima kind of lets you do a little bit of that cheekiness too turns your magician souls into like another thing they might want to interrupt i guess we have to talk about this stupid card and his best friend magical dimension and whatever this dickhead's called dimension conjurer and uh man now i forgot the name of this card oh of course magical dimension because it sets it this is like the weirdest card ever like People showed me stuff you can do with it where you normal it, add the magical dimension from Jekyll Grave to hand, and then you link this into Link, Karibo, or Artemis. I think, yeah, you link into Artemis because then you draw cards equal to the number of spell casters you control, but then you place them on top of your deck in any order equal to the number of cards you drew. So it's like a nice mulligan. The problem is DM doesn't have a Link 1 that makes this useful, and it's also like, while this card says normal or special, like, it doesn't special itself, so it suffers from the same problem as every dm card which is you are not rod and that brings me to rod rod is a very good dm card i think it goes top of b i would say top of b because only because it can't search anything super good yet soul servants normally your best search right and that's not that says a lot we should have a dm fusion that we can add but we cannot so I'm going to put Rod top of B for now. Rod will get better if we get a crack DM spell. Circle will also get better if that happens. But for now, they're going to sit in B and C. Rod as a normal summon provides you just another piece of the puzzle. It lets you go and get your eternal soul piece or your circle piece. Or you could even get some whack shit like illusion magic if you're missing that, if you're missing DMs. I'm going to put Illusion Magic in D because it does see play from time to time, unlike the cards down here, which shouldn't see play, minus my boys in time. I'm going to put my time boys at the top because they're probably the most viable. Um, but yeah, minus, and maybe Chronicle, but she's she's still bad. Um, minus that, this is probably the most playable card in D so far, purely because... You can use it like a pseudo call by the grave. If you didn't know, you can go normal rod effect. If they imperm or veiler, you can chain this, add two DMs, and then the rod search still goes through. So that's nice. The other thing is DM in the hand. This format's actually not that bad. And if people try to banish your DMs in the grave, you're going to lose your magic, try to get them back. It was good back in the day when we just didn't have ways to DM. Like when it first came out. It's not so good now. Let's talk about another normal summon for DM. I did want to talk about Invoked as well. I don't know if I got the room for it. I think I had to cut it, sadly. But that's okay. We'll talk about Diviner real quick. Diviner is a normal summon that's definitely better than Rod, so I'm going to put it up in A for now. Diviner means you can normal summon it and go into a Link 2. Because you normal Diviner, you send Herald of the Arclight. Herald of the Arclight will search you a card that we now need to bring up to the top. It will search you this beautiful boy, Illusion of Chaos, who is going to go up in the A tier. Now, the reason for that is you are able to grab a ritual when you send Herald, right? And Illusion of Chaos lets you grab Magician Souls, which means Diviner can now either overlay with Magician Souls, summoning out Dark Magician Girl. They can overlay into Beatrice. That's awesome. I don't have Beatrice on this list, but you can kind of assume Divine is part of that. Another thing is you can go for to Zulkan plays. They're really nice too, because Divine is actually a tuner. So you can go for to Zulkan. 
Um, and then you just need to set a spell or trap and you'll be able to summon out Crystal Wing. So that's really nice too. Diviner works really nice in like a more ritual based build of the deck where you might play in a Deer Servant as well. All in all, Diviner in DM is very cool. I've made a couple of videos on Diviner in DM and I think it's pretty cool. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you can go check those vids out. But yeah, I love it. It's great. I'm going to put in A tier. Don't get me wrong, I love Normaling Rod because you'd really want to grab those DM pieces, but sometimes it just feels good to have gas and go off. It was obviously also better when we could go into Anaconda, which we can't anymore. And for real, let's just get this out of the way and put Dragoon in the A tier with Anaconda, right? That's that's something that we all knew was happening. Or the S tier with Anaconda. That That is the true representation of amazing DM cards. I've gone ahead and added another tier to the bottom and you might be thinking what it's for and it's actually going to be for all of our amazing Dark Magician cards. That's going to be our DMG, our Mahad and our Mana and did I forget the Dark Magician? You think when I make a Dark Magician tier list video that I would at least put the Dark Magician in it? <laughs> Uh, I'm either really tired or I just can't find this Dark Magician. Uh, I genuinely forgot to put Dark Magician in my own tier list, so I've just put Dark Magician Knight in there for now, which kind of serves the same purpose, but uh, we'll, we'll move it around when we get to Knight's title, right? Anyway, Dark Magician Girl, the Dragon Knight. This card shouldn't exist. It's just anime bait. It's terrible. It was in the anime. It was very cute, but it's really bad. Discarding a card to pop a card's cool and quick effect cool, but you just can't summon it. It's like Magician Souls into DMG into I have to my it's like what? And then you gotta discard again, like three card combo to pop a card. Like not ideal in the slightest. Uh we're gonna compare it to the Dragon Knight, which I wanna say is Honestly, an A or B tier fusion monster. What do you guys think? I'm gonna put him in B tier purely because he's not good to summon. Like, he's hard to summon. This card is probably an A tier worthy card, but we just can't summon it the same way we can Dragoon, right? We can ref, get Dragoon out. Where's the ref for this card, right? <laughs> this card is worse than Dragoon by a long shot, I want to say. And we don't have a one card way to summon it. We don't have cards that search that one card way. And we never had a great little link to Snecky Boy that got us there either. So unfortunately, Dark Magician the Dragonite's only accessible through Rod and Souls doing their combo using the Tamias play normally to uh, summon out the Dragonite. Speaking of Tamias, who's featured in a lot of these artworks, let's bring the two Tamias cards out. We've got the Eye of Tamias, and we're looking for the Monster Tamias. There he is. Both of these cards are terrible. I'm going to put them here in the E tier. Uh, the D tier, sorry. The reason they're in the D tier, you know what? I actually want to put the I lower. I is in the E tier. Makes sense. E and E, all right? So the reason I is here in the E tier is because it's just bad. It's just unplayable because it's unsearchable. Why would they do that? This is basically on the level of these cards because these are not technically DM cards, like half of them. Some of them, not all of them. So like, what do you even do with this? I, I don't know. People say, oh, you got to play it three. You can't search it. I, th I disagree. I think it's too bricky for that. So then you think, oh, we'll play it at two, but then you won't see it. But then I think, oh, you may as well play it at one at that point, so you don't brick on it. <laughs> so I have to is in a really awkward spot because it's unsearchable, and it just shouldn't exist. Let's be real. Card's dumb. If they wanted to make it so balanced and restrictive, they should have just done something else other than made it unsearchable, because that's stupid. The Tamias monster, on the other hand, is just cap. It's not good. People who tell me, like, oh, the Tamias monster is a direct replacement for I, I'm like, no, that's wrong. Because at least... If we had the spell searchable finally, you could go Magician Soul Summon DM, activate Eye of Tamias, and there you go into your Dragon Knight or Dragoon. That only plays into a couple of hand traps and whatnot, right? That is much safer than the way we have to go, which is normal Rod. Rod has to add you Soul Servant. Magician Souls has to summon out DM, who I forgot to put in the list. Then you have to banish Soul Servant. Oh, we'll stack Tamias with Soul Servant, banish it. Then you have to send the Rod, summon the Tamias. And then you get your fusion. But it's an activated effect once again, so they can negate it. There's a lot of things they can negate there. It's real bad. Feel free to change my mind, but I think this card sucks. Dark Magician of Chaos. Super old card. Uh, you should probably go in the F tier. Maybe the E tier. Hey, the card's bad, alright? I'd say I have Tamias is maybe better than it though. So I don't know. Let's put it down here. This card's good in Goat or whatever it is. This card sucks now, alright? It's bad. Get it out of here. We're not talking about it. Ooh, we get some of the uh, cool cards. Our dedication through light and darkness. This is tribute to DM, special or dark magician of chaos from hand at grave. So just other garbage cards that don't really facilitate much in the deck. They're going to go down here. 
I love them, don't get me wrong. They're amazing, beautiful anime goddesses. They just don't do anything. Uh, I'm gonna put Chaos Scepter Blast in with those two. They kind of go all together. Chaos Scepter Blast kind of seems like the better card, but it's still bad. It says if you have a level eight or higher spell cost to banish a card on the field face down, which you could do with Dragoon. Uh, then if this card's destroyed in the spell's trap zone by opponent's card effect, you can special a um, Magician of Black Chaos or a Dark Magician of Chaos from your deck, ignoring its summoning conditions. Now, of course, Dark Magician of Chaos is this guy here. Magician of Black Chaos, where is he? I He didn't even make the cut. He didn't even make the cut, unfortunately. The, his brothers did, though. Chaos Max and uh, Magician of Chaos. Magician of Chaos is honestly like the Dark Magician retrain we need. It's just impossible to summon. So I'm going to put it up here and it's really hard to get to. Um, but yeah, once again, you play one or two and it's fine. Chaos Max is actually a hella busted card. But once again, the Diviner Builds try to get to it. It's hard to get to. I guess, uh, can I have these on the same level? This you want to summon on your opponent's turn and it just like you tribute it and it just means your opponent can't use card effects. It's nuts. This is just a more consistent version of a vanilla DM. So like, go figure. You could... They're both good in their own way. I'm going to put them in D together because they both still suck, but are cool. If they were easier to summon, we'd use them. But Ritual DM is just ass. Ah, a card that just shouldn't exist. Dark Magic Expanded. Expanded what? This card is terrible. It's just like gain attack and then your spell cast is around affected this turn. It's, it's, it's just bad. Let's talk about cards that are cool. The XYZs. These cards are actually pretty bad. <laughs> Ebon Illusion Magician is actually pretty good. I'd happily put it in the C tier. It's it's C to D. It's kind of, it's mid, but it's one of the okay cards. You know, it's in the extra deck. So that's always a plus because if a mid card's in the extra deck, you use it when you need it. Uh, Ebon High is too situational and too bad. It, it was made as like a defensive XYZ to let you play uh, a quick play spells and traps from your hand. So I guess your opponent wouldn't pop them. But I mean... They can just pop this, like, <laughs> I don't know, this card seemed really bad, but it did float into a spellcaster, which I thought was nice, but I still think it's pretty ass. and Ebon Illusion's just the better card here. They really nailed Ebon Illusion, so I, I, they just didn't need to make high, but that's okay. Alright, we've got some DM Fusions up next. We've got Dark Cavalry, which probably should sit in the E tier, around the same level as Dark Paladin. I, I think it's better than Dark Paladin. It's got piercing, it gains attack for the spell traps that are around. I think it's Field Engrave, which is cool. Um, and it can negate stuff if it targets a specific card. It's okay. I think you have to discard for that negate. It's just not quite there. And it's Dark Magician and a Warrior is not like an easy combo. So I don't know what they wanted you to do with this card. Clearly they're like, hey, just play Gaia, man. Come on. <laughs> um, so that's not happening. Until they give us a damn fusion spell, some of these fusions just can't even be considered. They could be like a niche tech, but they just aren't worth the extra deck space at all right now. Speaking of Gaia fusions, we got a new one. I do want to put this one. I think it's a crime to put it higher than the other Gaia fusion. It's probably better though. You'd think by a 2023 standard card. I know it's announced in 2022, but it will be coming out 2023. You think it would be better? I know that like after uh, Dragoon, every fusion we get will seem lackluster, but this card just missed the mark by a fair bit. I believe it still does the piercing. I need to check what it does. So it does still do the piercing. And when you destroy opponent's monster, you can inflict damage to your opponent equal to that monster's attack. Like, that's cool. It's like Flame Wingman, but it's not. And then if it's destroyed, you get to summon DM and Gaia, the Dragon Champ specifically from Hand Deck, Extra Deck or Grave. So, you know, DM and Gaia Dragon Champ. That's actually cool to summon. It's a lot of damage, but you need to pop your own guy, right? You need... I do have combos on popping your own um, Gaia Dragon Champ or whatever this is called. Dark Magician, the Magical Knight of Dragons. I do have combos on how to do that, but it's just too niche and like, uh, it's annoying. It could have been a lot better, but hey, probably could have been worse. The best thing is you can use a dragon or a warrior to summon it, but then it's just, once again, we have so many dragon fusions. Amulet Dragon, Dragon Knight, Dragoon, like, there's just better ones to summon. I'm going to summon Dragoon over a lot of them. Dragon Knight's great if you have Eternal Soul Circle, otherwise Dragoon's normally just better than everything. Especially going second, Dragoon's the best one. Like, because the material is so similar, like, DM and a level 7 Dragon. Or a level 7 or higher dragon? Is that correct? So yeah, it's it's a level 7 or higher dragon and warrior. It's more specific than Dragoon. So like, why would I ever do this? Like, when I can just make Dragoon. It, it's, it's like no one at Konami has a brain when it comes to DM. They either let DM be so busted that it's Dragoon level, or they let it be so redundant that it's 
magical dragon knight level. While we're on the topic of DM fusions, let's get Master Chaos out of here. I actually have kind of come to appreciate this card more because it can let you OTK. So I think it go it fits in with these cards, whether they're like a solid one of in the list. You don't have to see them to win, but sometimes seeing them's nice. Sometimes you see them and you go, oh, I don't really want it. But in this case, it's an extra deck card. So it's pretty good to just sit in your extra deck. This card lets you OTK if you open Rod and Souls and your opponent has Brick. Now, I know that's a bit specific, but you'll have games where you need to capitalize on an opponent's misplay or an opponent's board wipe, for example. And this is one of those times. Rod and Souls will get you there. But you do, sorry, you do need to have that off Illusion of Chaos. I have a video on that somewhere. Go find it. I can link it to you at some point. But anyway, the point is Illusion of Chaos grabs you one of these pieces and it's kind of a three card combo. You put one back and then your Master of Chaos can pop off from there. In the battle phase, you will be doing secret shenanigans. Speaking of which, let's go grab secrets. Secrets is the fusion spell that really missed the mark and that's going to put it in the C tier. I would honestly say D tier, but I do think it's actually better than Tamias. Yes, it doesn't let you get to the big boy dragon fusions quite as easily, but I think it's just a better card in general. Though I think it might be mean to group it. I think it's too mean to group it like higher than Tamias. They're really similar and just both bad. So let's put them together. Tamias honestly feels like it getting negated so many more ways than Secrets. And Secrets being quick play means you can do cool stuff in the battle phase like the Master of Chaos play. But alas, they're both very, very old-fashioned kind of meh fusion spells. And I know DM's an old archetype, but you do need some good cards to get going. Speaking of good cards, let's just go and see my best friend Red Eyes Fusion who's going to make his way up to the S tier. Now, you could put it in A tier, but I'm just going to put it in S tier. This card makes Dragoon. It puts DM in Grave. It's essentially Power Crap Magician Souls. It puts DM in Grave, which in this case is DM Knight, because I didn't have a DM on the tier list. Um, and it puts Red Eyes in Grave. Obviously, you got to play Red Eyes. People are like, oh, I don't want to play a brick. And it's like, my brother in Christ, you play DM. <laughs> you were born of the bricks. What will, what will one more do? <laughs> Take out your DMG and play Red Eyes. It's honestly so much better. I'm going to put these cards at the top. I, I, I don't care. You can at me. I don't give a fuck. They're, they're amazing cards. All right. We're, we're nearly done. We're nearly done. We're getting there. Um, Inheritance. I really liked this card, so I'm a bit biased. I'll put it in E because I know I'm a bit biased. It shouldn't go in D. It shouldn't go in D. It's going in E. Uh, it should be like high E, though, in my opinion. The reason is it was an OG DM card that came out around the time as Circle and Eternal Soul and Navi uh, and all that shit. And you could see the intention was there. They were like, hey, in future you'll have DM spells that go to the grave. Because so far we only had circles. So it's like, well, I can't banish circle for this inheritance effect. <laughs> so you're like, what am I meant to be banishing? Like, it's banished two spells, search any DM spell trap. Like, great. I can circle, grab DM, and then maybe if I have enough spells in grave, I can inheritance and grab, uh, you know, eternal soul or the last piece I need, my whatever you need. But then what two spells do you have in grave? Even banishing one spell would have been enough. I don't know why they made it two. Two is too many. Um, but even nowadays, it's it's still not played. Sometimes I have a build where I slip it in as a one-off, and that's all it'll ever be. It'll only ever be a one-off, because it's basically our fourth copy of Rod, but it's a spell form, and it needs two spells to banish. It's it's like, what, what are we, Sky Striker now? Like, what's going on? Why do we need spells in Grave? But I guess that's another reason why you could say Upstart and Chicken Game would be really good. And yeah, Chicken Game, I don't think I said before, but Chicken Game with Magician Souls is just better Upstart. Obviously, you chicken game draw, summon magician souls, send chicken game for draws. Like, it's really good. Anyway, Inheritance, for me, missed the mark because our future support cards should have just been generic searching spells. Like, I wanted a Rota, and Soul Servant was that, but I really wanted a more generic Rota. And, like, I always thought Illusion of Chaos. I was like, oh my god, our Rota, and it's a ritual, and we can search it with prep. Um, so prep should also be an A tier, probably, but... I didn't have room for prep. But then, yeah, Illusion of Chaos is a ritual and it stays in your hand. So you can't use freaking Inheritance once again. Like, if you play prep, obviously you can put the prep in the grave for Inheritance. But um, you just need something else. It's It just never works out because the DM spells all stay on the field. Like Circle, Salvation. Uh, it's, it's dumb. It, it's like the Octave never works with itself. It's so silly. DM Octave feels like multiple people working on the same project. It's, it's truly disgraceful. Um... Keeper of Dragon Magic. Now, this is rising in popularity, so I think I'm being biased by putting it too low. I think it could be D, but because I hate it so much, I'm going to put it in E. Because I personally think for Dion, it missed the mark. It missed the mark. It was released as a like, hey, we know that summoning Dragonite's super hard, so here's this. Oh, it's like, oh, cool, can we still normal Rod? No, normal this instead. It's like, okay. Every time I normaled this when it came out, I was met with a hand trap. And you have to discard. <laughs> so I would... 
be passing turn to my opponent with this on the field and three cards in my hand <laughs> and nothing to do. This card feels abysmal and it's only truly good when you discard DM with it anyway because the effect says like, you know, discard a card in hand, DM, uh, and then search uh, fusion spell. And then it's other effects like reveal a fusion card uh, in your extra deck and summon the material from grave. So I, you have to have DM in your can with this for it to be like viable. And then you summon back the DM face down because they're like, oh, you'll, you can only fuse face down even though you're locked into fusions anyway. So why did they do that? Uh, and then you activate whatever fusion spell you search, which was just poly, which is really shit to play poly. Um, and then, yeah, you would fuse into your Dark Magician the Dragonite. Obviously, the problem being that took three freaking cards. Now, technically, it only took two cards, but you will be met with a hand trap or two, in my opinion. It's just better to use ref. And people will say, oh, but what if I want to make a different fusion or dragon knight and this or that? Uh, just use ref. It, it's just better. Anyway, Inheritance was a card that I think was destined for greatness and then fell short because of the future card design. Like, it, that's not even... Whoever made this, I think you did a good job and, well, actually, it should be Banish One spell, but whatever. But I can't fault the man who made Soul Servant because this card is beautifully designed. Anyway, Thousand Knives... Card is terrible. It's going straight in F tier. It shouldn't exist. It's really dumb. It's just like target a card on the field destroyed if you have a DM. What could be worse? It's it's worse fissure. Because you need DM on the field. <laughs> yeah, it's searchable, but it's bad. Uh, knowledge, I don't mind this card. People seem to think I hate it. I, I just put it in D tier. Like, it's not the cracked, most cracked card, but it is decent. Uh, this is going to represent the spellbook engine in general as well, not just knowledge. Um, because there's the link to, there's the blue boy package, and I didn't have room for it all. Once again, I had to make cuts. Um, I would put the blue boy package and all that shit in D tier. It's maybe a C tier, maybe I'm biased, but I think that stuff was good a while ago, not so good now. It just feels like drawing cards in DM isn't always the way. Another reason why Magician Souls feels a bit out of place in the deck sometimes, and why Magician Souls is better in Spiral and decks with spell trap graveyard effects, which we don't have for some reason. But anyway. Drawing two is always good, but in the format where Anaconda was legal, like, people who played this were a joke. Like, why were you giving away material that could make Anaconda? It's definitely better now that and there's no Anaconda. There's not really anything to extend into anymore. Outside of maybe going for a Dark Selene Link play, like, your rod happily becomes uh, your Artemis, wherever that is, and then you could just use your Magician Souls to send for draws with knowledge, right? Magicalized Fusion. This card is good. It was definitely better when Anaconda was legal because obviously you could send it. Um, it's worse now. It is a one card, a two card Dragoon with Magician Souls. If you play I'm Doc, which I forgot to put because I put Link Spider, but you get what I mean. Um, you can link away the Dark Magician you summon for I'm Doc and then just play Magical Eye. So two card Dragoon, not bad. I'd probably put it in the C tier comfortably. It's one of those cards you're comfy to play at one, but any more than that is probably bad. And it will brick you because you'll just open it with a bunch of DM cards and do nothing. So it could probably even move to the D tier. Maybe it was a C or B when Anaconda was legal. I love Magicalize, but it's probably got to sit in D. Uh, but it, yeah, I would say it's better than Secrets and Tamias. Obviously, people are like, oh, early game, like it does nothing. But the late, the mid to late game on this card is crazy better than this. It literally makes Dragoon, right? And I guess we can, we can easily compare it to these cards because if you open this with Souls, you're not making a play, right? You're part, those two cards do nothing. If you open, open Tamias with Souls, you can send whatever the souls of the card you summon off souls for Tamias, but you're not fusing. You need a third card to send for Tamias summon to then make a fusion. So it's still three cards. This is three cards. This is at least two card fusion with Magician Souls, which means Illusion of Chaos and uh, Magical Eyes is also two card uh, fusion. Which means Preparation of Rites is also two card fusion. See where I'm going with this. So I think that proves Magical Eyes is better than these two cards, even though it's not a DM related card. Oh my god, the Magician of Dark Illusion. I think it's got to go in E tier. It's just part of those DM cards that just didn't quite hit the mark. I think back when it came out, it was really good. You would Magician Navigation, that's another card that we'll talk about. And you would normally summon out a DM and one of these guys in defense, and you could pop off from there. You were able to get rid of that DM and then actually bring it back using this guy and then make like some sort of rank 7 with them. It was really cool. Now Navi, I'm going to put... I don't think Navi's quite in the C tier, but I think Navi fits into the D tier really nicely. Yes, everyone loves its graveyard effect. It's like, oh, but it's so good. Like, negate a spell trap. Like, oh, should we play Foolish Burial Goods to, like, send it? And I'm like, brother, just play Solemn Judgment at that point. <laughs> like, Yes, I know this is searchable and whatnot, but it's not really worth it. Back in the day, it was very good just because we didn't have any other way to summon DM. And Eternal Soul was... 
I can't remember, it was out, but it would just like, you'd play both back then, right? You'd play like two of each or three of each. It was wild back then. Old school DM was crazy. So yeah, taking out old school DM was probably really dumb for us to play multiple Navi and Eternal Soul together, but it's a thing that we did. And we played Apprentice at three back then too. But yeah, I'd say Navi has d uh, aged very badly. It's also Ashable. People always complain to me that Ref is Ashable, and these are the same people who normally are like playing Navi, so it's just like, do you hear yourself, brother? At least if I get ashed on this, it's on turn one, and I can hopefully set some cards and survive from there. If you get ashed on this, like, bro, what do you do? I mean, once again, you have other set cards, but you're probably getting dusted if you're flipping this, right? Anyway, I'm just salty because Ref is the best card and people refuse to acknowledge it. Anyway, Magi Karibo. I think that's where he should go. No, I actually think Magi Karibo is probably a solid D tier. He's probably... Uh, every time I read this card or think about this card, I always think it's better than it is. Not being a spellcaster actually does make it lose a couple of DM interactions and stuff and, like, knowledge. Like, there's a couple of things where it actually doesn't work because it's a fiend. And it's like, why is this a fiend, Konami? Like, I get Karibo is all fiends, but they could have just made an exception, made a spellcaster. It's even got the circle in the background like it's dm's karibo but whatever um the effect to add itself back to hand i think is really good with like looping dragoon for negates but it's also really niche and the spellcaster has to die for that to happen so yikes cards that normally need your opponent interaction to function are normally pretty shit so i'm gonna go ahead and put this man i'm gonna put him in the et i'm sorry it's just not a good card i love him he's cute he's just not great I think I would rather play Navi than Magi Karibo, which is very sad. <laughs> and look, trust me, it hurts me to say that. Magi Magi Magician Girl. The card we will never get. Um, I think this might be a solid C tier. Let me just Google it real quick. So Magi Magi is two level six spellcasters, which can be achieved with Apprentice Illusion Magician and Magician Soul Summoning out DMG. But that's still a three card combo, mind you. So think about that before you like think this card's broken because everyone's like, oh, we'd be so good with Magi Magi. And I'm like, I don't think so but anyway that's the best way to get to magi magi um so three card combo so it's got to be good right what does she do from there well you detach a material from this card and banish a card from your hand to activate one of these effects so you're using four cards do you guys still want magi magi like she's not as good as everyone makes her out to be i think she would have been good back in the day but she's not good now so anyway i haven't even read the effects yet and i'm already like negative four cards to do this effect so it better win me the game and one of those effects is target a monster opponent controls, take control of that target till the end of the phase. Okay, so big eye. The other effect, target a monster opponent's graveyard, special summon that target. Both effects are very good effects, don't get me wrong. The fact that you have to detach material and banish a card from your hand? What? Can we just discard? Why is it banish as well? It's really bad. People overhype this card. Maybe because it's a woman. Maybe because it's DMG. Maybe because people are weebs. I don't really care, and I don't really want to know, but I'm telling you right now. I thought this card would be C tier, and I am thinking it's down in E tier. This card sucks. It's not the quite level of F tier cards, but this card sucks. You have to use four cards to get here in a standard DM hand. You can't tell me that's healthy. Just to achieve, like, one big eye effect. You can at least use Magician Souls and, like, Vashuda Tenyi, which we will talk about now. The Shooter Tenny happily would fit into like a nice D or C tier in the deck. I'm going to go with D and be generous like to people who haven't used it. It's just a good card because it summons itself for free if you have no monsters. And then if you have a vanilla monster like your DM, you can summon it for free once again. Uh, it's a level 7 dark and when it is in the grave, you can banish it and return a card. Target a card your opponent controls, return it to the hand. So combine this with Magician Souls and Circle, you can actually get a bunch of interruptions by activating circle, magician souls out DM, circle banish, get rid of something, summon out the Tenny Vishuda, link into our Ebon Illusion Magician, detach the Vishuda, summon out a DM from deck, Vishuda banish itself, because we now control a vanilla thanks to the Ebon summoning DM, and then you can return a card from your opponent's uh, field to the hand, then you're able to go to battle phase, uh, get the vanilla DM to swing, and it will get a banish through the Eborn uh, Illusion Magician effect. So a lot, a lot of banishes you can get there, or interruptions, I should say. Um, just really nice little interactions. It's obviously all going second stuff, so not DM's forte, but things you can do to try force responses from the opponent. So I like the shooter. It's a dark and it's a level seven. It is a worm, but it's still pretty good for the deck. I don't think it's quite worthy of C. I do like it, though, so I'll put it in D. It's a bit sad that I'm putting cards I like in D, but that's... 
I'm being realistic and as honest as I can. Norito, Norito is a pretty solid one-off, I want to say. So I'm pretty gonna, like, pretty happily gonna put it up here. And that reason being is you normally Norito into the Ebon Illusion Magician. So I'm pretty happy to put this man up here with him. Um, and this guy is a spell trap negate himself. And then you can go into Ebon and then you can go into Zeus. So that's another reason why these cards are higher than, say, this. Because while going into Norito, as we explained earlier with Magi Magi, is Magician Souls plus uh, Apprentice, which means it's a three-card combo. Getting to this Norito, you can go to Battle Phase and Swing. And then you can overlay into your Ebon uh, Illusion Magician. And then you can overlay into Zeus. And you've got a Zeus with two cents. That's worth three cards. Not the Magi Magi four-card combo that goes nowhere for just taking one monster. So... That's my mindset of that. If you're wondering, if I'm not being biased on the Xyz. I have genuine reason, reasoning for it. So yeah. The shooter is cool, but yeah. It's kind of like our friend uh, Chronicle Magician here. And I'm pretty sure he's in the same category. Oh, no, I lied. I actually put Chronicle up here. Well, I guess he's kind of like the shooter, but searchable in the DM archetype. So, you know, I'm happy to put the shooter away from him. Though, this creates more interruptions. This creates a higher attack DM. You could argue they... This one's probably better, right? Maybe I'm capping. Maybe I'm capping. Eh, I'm going to leave the shooter here for now. It's fine. We'll come back. Media Dragon. I am game enough to put Media Dragon up in C to B tier, I want to say. I'm going to put it in B. And you might be thinking, why? Well, it acts as a Magician Souls for the deck, which means you get to send the Vanilla DM and then you can summon it, and it's a level 7 on field. It's normally a level 6, but 7 when you summon it off this effect. Uh, you can then use your Magician Soul, send your other bricks, that's your DMG or your Marhard or your Mana, and then you can, you know, summon the DM that you sent off the uh, Media Dragon, and you're actually able to make a rank 7 from there. Media Dragon's got a secondary effect where the turn after it's sent to Grave, you can banish it and add a ref to your hand, so you know why I like it. Um, but yeah, very good card, very good card. Also, I couldn't fit Red Eyes Insight in here, so you can also assume Red Eyes Insight's up here with Ref, because it's good. But Insight's kind of worse card, bricky sometimes and shit. But it will be sending a Meteor Dragon in future, not Wyvern so much, so it could be good. Could be better. I want to talk about Piercing, because a lot of people, like, love Piercing. I'm putting it in F, alright? This card sucks. I don't know if it sucks more than Magi Magi, though. It probably does. Maybe it goes in E, because it's, like, nearly playable, but not quite there. People often are like, oh, Loza, you play Upstar, but you won't play Piercing. And I'm like, absolutely. Like, <laughs> Piercing requires you to summon a vanilla. Upstart, I can play regardless. Like, it's just a better card. Yes, Piercing can get you draws over multiple turns, but people really miss the fact that, like, that's not going to happen in modern Yu-Gi-Oh. Like, multiple turn draws, not, not the best thing in a deck like this. I know you can gain ridiculous amounts of attack with it, but I, I think it's just a waste. Just go on Access Code or Dragoon, you'll be fine. Alright, I'm getting picky now. Uh, Dark Magic Veil. I'm putting this straight in FT. I know people like it, but my brother in Christ, just play Monster Reborn. This card should be a DM card, and then I would like it a lot more. It should identify as a DM card, but it doesn't. So, it's going down here. It's stinky. Yeah, I can summon from hand, but why does it cost 1,000 LP? It's really dumb. Robe! Robe is garbage. Unplayable. Or don't play it. I'm putting it in F. Sage of Stone. Um... I almost don't want to put it in F, but it's really not far off. Uh, if you have DMG, I'm pretty sure this lets you summon DM. It's It sure is an interesting card. So yeah, if you have DMG, you can summon DM from hand or deck. I, I don't like it. I, I'm putting it back in F, actually. I hate it. It's it's really weird and bad. Yo, Giga Chad Dark Sage. I love the Dark Sage. I really do. Same for my love for Dark Flare Knight. But we got to be real. These cards are absolute ass. So they're going down here. Sorcerer of Dark Magic kind of fits a similar bill. He was clearly made as this movie card. Maybe it even fits up here. He was clearly made as a cool, like, alternate uh, DM boss monster for the movie, where you tribute two level six or higher spellcasters, which, you know, you used to summon off your freaking Navi. Um, and then he negates every trap your opponent controls, except he can't negate counter traps, obviously, so it's kind of stupid. And, like, I don't know. It's just negating traps is never really that good. And also having two level six spellcasters turn one is kind of weird in this deck. As you know... You could do like Magician Souls uh, going and summoning DM and then Apprentice discarding to summon. And then you could summon this. But you've used like four cards to get to this and you can't search this and it's got no protection. So it's pretty bad. Obviously, this in Village seems really powerful because no spells, no traps. But at the end of the day, I just, I don't think it's strong enough. All right, we're nearly at the end. Oh, I'm losing my voice. Magician Salvation. The field spell we always wanted and never should have gotten. 
This card sucks. This card says, set Eternal Soul from your deck. That's it. The rest of the text never matters. Summoning DM and then alternating it with DMG or vice versa is a dumb effect. It's stupid. I hate it. It wants us to play like more into the bonds package and shit, and it's just dumb. This card's best use is setting Eternal Soul and then being sent for draws with uh, Magician Souls or sent with a For the Tamiya Summon. And that's not how it should be used. It should be a field spell like Magical Meltdown. It should be like the Tier Element field spell. It should be like the Therians field spell. Read any modern field spell. Oh my god, they all do so much more. Like, my god. I've always wanted a DM field spell, even though people are like, you already have village, you don't need one. And I was like, but I want like an archetype one that does engine stuff. And I got it. And yes, I was disappointed. It's pretty bad. I would nearly put this in E, but the fact that this card actually sees play alone moves it to probably the top of D tier. Though, man, it shouldn't be played, to be honest. But it's kind of, it feels better than playing like three Eternal Soul, right? You go one of this and two of this. It's still dumb, but it feels a little bit better. All right, Nadir's Servant. Nadir's Servant also includes like Schism plays in the deck. Uh, it's super good. I would say A tier, but because it's a buy steel meta and a Shizu meta, I'd probably put it in B. But if it wasn't such a wanky, like, no graveyard meta, I'd probably put it higher. But B seems like a safe spot for Nadir. It lets you do Dogmatica plays, whether that's Punishment, Ecclesia, Fleur Lee, Maximus. There's a bunch of stuff you can do. It's very good with the Diviner version of DM, so I could group these together, but purely because of the format, I'll put it down here. I mean, I could say that for Diviner, but you get what I mean. Um, this is very much, this is more graveyard reliant than Diviner because your punishment literally does nothing if it can't send a grave. Uh, Nadir can't activate if it can't send a grave. Like, it's so much of the deck turns off. I do love Nadir. Uh, it's a very good card, but it, it's certainly rough in this format. All right, Knight's title. I'm going to grab the Dark, uh, the Dark Magician, the Dragon Knight here. Uh, sorry, the Dark Magician, just regular Knight here. I love this guy to pieces and I love Knight's title, but they're both really dumb and really bad cards. You can open your Knight's title with your Magician Souls and I guess use Rod to grab it. And it lets you sub out your DM for a DM Knight and pop a card on the field. And then you have a Warrior on the field instead of a Spellcaster. I'd... It's cool, I love it. There's not much point to it though. The Dark Magicians, this is a fusion that just... It just misses the mark. I guess if I've put... Where have I put the other fusions? I've put the other fusions I hate down here. I don't think it's quite down there, but the fact that this card doesn't... If this card identified as DM and DMG, which it should have, it would be like here, or at least here. Like, it, it would be up here, but it doesn't. It doesn't identify as DM or DMG, and I can't see myself putting it any higher than CT. You know, I even think that's too generous. This card at least gives you an, uh, a kill sometimes. Like, it can kill the, kill the board for you, win the game for you. This card, people are like, oh, you get infinite advantage of it, like... In what game? In a game where you flip 10 floodgates and sit behind them. You get dusted once and it's over. And every time you go into this card, you will find that you do not recover the resources you spent summoning it. It's three cards off to Tamias or three cards off Secrets to get into this bad boy. And it never feels worth it, in my opinion. The cards you draw off it are mid. You need to have other cards to draw cards. So it's not like you summon it and draw. You summon it and then you need something else. So it's three cards to get here, and then you've got to have, like, a Soul Servant ready to go. It's just stupid. Like, why? Let me draw for free. I just spent three cards to get here. The best thing is when you do uh, use this effect, and you draw a card that's, say, Eternal Soul, you can set it in your Spell Trap and activate it right away, so you can flip it up and actually use that Eternal Soul turn one. But once again, you just summon out DM, so you're like, yippee. <laughs> or you can search Dark Magic Attack with Thousand Knives. Skill Dark Magician, it's going to go right in the F tier. This card sucks. If it has three spell counters, you contribute it, and you can summon a DM. But to get spell counters, you've got to play three spells, so probably no. Quintet. Quintet is a very good fusion. It's the five-head dragon of spellcasters. I mean, I think I want to put it on C tier. I think that is true. Because it's not quite D tier level. I don't want to say it's D tier, but it's hard to summon. Like, you could maybe even say B tier because of how strong it is once it's out. It's very hard to for your opponent to out, and it's good against super poly formats. And it's just a good blowout card. Super good to summon off Magicalized. But once again, we don't have Anaconda, which makes it rough. So I'll probably move it to next to Magicalized in C. Though you could drop it down here if you just don't get to summon it using five spellcasters. nowhere near as good. It's an interesting card, and I do like it, though, in my builds. It's just not always there. So I guess... 
Based on that logic, it should probably be a bit lower. But you know what? Ah, it's got to be better than Dark Magician. So let's put it back up here. All right, we've got True Name and we've got Archfiend's Oath. They serve a similar purpose, so I'm going to group them together. They probably belong here in the E tier, but my god, are they funny. These cards let you look at the top card of your deck or predict the top card of your deck. And if you get it right, you are rewarded. In the Archfiend's Oath case, you get to add it to your hand instead of, I think it goes to the grave. Um... And then in True Name's case, you get to add an Egyptian God from your deck to hand too. So you can add Ra's Fear Mode. It's really nice. Or you can summon out Obelisk or Slifer as an extender. So a couple of options with True Name. True Name's once per turn, Archfiend's Oath. I think it isn't. But mainly it's a continuous spell, which means you can go for a draw that you've seen off um, Circle with Archfiend's Oath. Or you can uh, chain, you know, Archfiend's Oath and then use Soul Servant wherever Soul Servant went. And then stack the top of your deck. And then you're actually going to be able to, you know, predict that draw safely. And you'd normally go for Magician Souls there. So from there, you can summon that Magician Souls. Send the Archfiend's Oath for draw. Oh, you probably Soul Servant draw first. Then if you draw an extra card you want to send with the Magician Souls, you could do that with the Archfiend's Oath and the extra card. But yeah, lots of draws, basically. Bit of luck. And obviously, if you open these without the stacking cards, like Soul Servant and Circle, they are pretty bad. So it's funny DM meme stuff, but it's not the best. All right, Village. This card is straight up oppressive. I would say in some matchups it is A tier, but because it can be useless, I'm going to put it in B tier. Card's very good. Uh, this card plus Dragoon is, you know, game against Flunder and a lot of other decks. The problem with this card is it's very dead going second and, you know, you only search with Terraforming. It's basically a Floodgate, but it is a field spell, which is nice. Another reason my Salvation sucks is because if you have Salvation out, you're just getting rid of it for this. So hopefully you can get some value off Salvation by sending it for draws or summoning twice with it before you go into your village. But yeah, village is cool. Village is cool. Okay, Unity and Strength or whatever this card is called. I need to look it up. Strength in Unity is uh, for when you Ritual or Fusion Summon using Blue Eyes or DM. You target one card your opponent controls within their grave and banish it. Wow, it's an Ashizu Tear card. Um, if this card is sent to the field of grave, you can add a, uh, target a level 7 or higher normal engrave, add it to hand, or shuffle it into deck. So what, Magician Souls could send this, and then you could add a vanilla DM back to your hand. That's interesting, isn't it? But, I guess you'd want to get the pop off first? I, I don't know, this card sucks. I don't know what they were thinking with this card. They really balance DM cards too much and make them unusable. All right, another card that the Bond package can get you, but it's really bad, is the Dark Magic Twin Burst. You can see right here. This card, you target a DM, and it gains attack equal to the combined attack of all DMGs on the field and in the graveyards. <laughs> Encouraging people to play more than one DMG is just terrible. Even one is bad enough. Until the end of this, it's just attack gain. It's so bad. Just play Axis Code, just play Dragoon, please. Play Boral Soul, play anything, please. This card is going straight in F tier. One to one, now this is an interesting one. I want to find where Knowledge is at, because I don't think it should be much higher than Knowledge. Um, because I do think it's strictly worse, and I put it here to make a point. So Knowledge is here, I'm going to put one to one down here in E. It's here because it's an equip spell, which means you can equip it, it can get MST, the monster equipped to it can just be removed, and then you don't get the draws. Um, this card, Knowledge at least, I mean, this is the Spellbook engine as well, but Knowledge, when you play it, it does nothing for cost. You're just playing it for cost. And then if your opponent responds, you can then send and draw, obviously, and get rid of that monster too. But being equipped is just so much safer. Like, you don't lose the stupid shit like MST Twins then, like, right? So, I, I don't know. 1-1 one -to, -one to me is just an infinitely worse Knowledge. While I know 1-1 one -one is not once per turn, like... It's still not that relevant. Like, you still could just play Knowledge and 1-1-1. One, one one. Like, 1-1 one and one would probably be good. Even Allure. I couldn't fit Allure into this once again, but you could play Allure. Holy crap! That's everything! So, to recap... Well, I'm not going to say everything. I'm just going to go through the pitches. I think this is very safe to say that Dragoon, Anaconda, Ref are the top tier. And these cards are the solid DM cards that make the deck very playable. We've got some, like, techie boys over here. And then we've got, like, a card we hope that gets unbanned. Chicken Game, of course, is usable on Master Duel, but not in TCG. And there's just a lot of DM engine, but then some of our nice little extendery boys and whatnot. We've got some beautiful extra deck boys. I'm going to move them to the back. And the rest of our monsters here are just like some DM cards with some nice support, such as Village and Nadir. 
Circle hits off the uh, C tier because it's very average. Then we've got your boys like the Bonds Package and Chronicle. You know what? Apprentice is probably better than these cards. Maybe even Dark Magic Attack. Then we've got some of our XZ Packages, our Magicalized Fusions, and some of our uh, Master of Chaos Fusions and Quintet. D tier enters Salvation and Secrets and Tamias, along with the Dark Magicians, Illusion Magic, and a lot of other DM cards that are just quite mid. Mid to bad. E tier is an abomination, even though there's cards in here I love, it's just a mess. Same with F tier, it just gets worse, but there are cards that win in time at the front, which are actually really cool. And finally, the Bricks. I forgot Dark Magician, but I'll edit it in, so yeehaw. Uh, we play these cards because we have to. I'm going to be honest, they're not good cards. Anyone who says they like playing them or they, they're good, like, you're kind of capping. They're just bricks that we have to play, more or less. Hopefully in future we get Palladium monsters, so we don't have to play these that are, like, extra deck monsters. Or other cards that identify as these, so we get to play better versions of them. Anyway, I think that is the Dark Magician tier list, so thanks so much for joining. I am Loza. If you haven't watched me before, I make a stack of DM Dark Magician content. DM Dark Magician, Yu-Gi-Oh! Dark Magician content, mixed with Master Duel, TCG, all of the above, and I have tournament plays, I have tournament wins, and I am trying to push the deck in the most competitive manner. Thank you for watching my tier list. That was a big one. I'll catch you guys next time. Please hit that subscribe. Okay, I finally got it to work with 89 uh, pitches for the tier list. Unfortunately, I had a whole lot more I wanted to use. There's a couple in here that I'm not going to get to use, like Dark Resonance Burst, which is actually a uh, Rush Duel card. So this card's getting a shout out. So effect, choose a face up monster level 6 or higher dark spellcaster you control. Gains 1000 till the end if you control DM or DMG, the chosen monster gains 1000 attack. So get 2k. I thought it was interesting, just a normal spell. It's pretty bad, but... It's a really nice art, and I'm like, they'll probably just give us this in the future, right? <laughs> we'll be like, thanks, Konami. <laughs> but anyway, I thought this would get the special shout-out of the video, because the art is just beautiful. But, you know what, giving 2k to DM could be hot with all the Chronicle Magician shenanigans. But anyway, there's a bunch of random cards like this too, like Floodgates, the Toon cards, uh, Zeus... Uh, a bunch of random things that I wanted to include, but I've just run out of room, guys. So I apologize. It is every DM card, though. I've made sure it's every DM card. I tried to include a lot of cards used by Yugi, like uh, Diffusion, Wave, Motion, but it just didn't make the cut. Magician Circle, Magician's Defense, neither of these made the cut either. I wanted to talk about Invoke, but it won't make the cut. So this card also didn't make the cut, because while it lists Dark Magician, it, it lists Spell Counters too, like... We don't really have much to get us spell counters, and all it does is special DM, so it's just shit eternal soul. So I didn't talk about this either.